G'day folks. Well over the years we have filmed hundreds of incredibly talented people across the world. Many of these artists have gone on to produce their own videos as well. We hope you enjoy this great lesson from one of our Colour in Your Life artists. Okay, I'm going to use this, uh, the 273, the warm grey. I'm just going to come through and just smooth a few areas out. Just by doing some circles. It's breaking up the lines a little so that they're not solid. If they're solid, that means that they, um, they jump forward and the texture of the lizard is not the important thing, the lizard itself is. So this bit here is quite sharp, this bit here softens quite a lot. And you can work on this sort of thing for a long time. Pretty much if you just want to doodle, you can doodle to your heart's content. Let's put these directional lines in. Little contours coming across. That's the shadow. This will be the top, and it disappears over this way. Say you've done it wrong, and you need to change it, just come in and put a few extra lines in. Not a problem. This one here. So just think if it's an innie or an outy wrinkly line. light grey again. Just softly because this is just little wrinkles. Don't need it to be bright and sharp. They're not very distinct. Can change the pressure occasionally and um, add a lighter one or two just because it has them. And as you change the pressure, it just means that you're getting a more, uh, more natural look. Overall, nature isn't neat and tidy. That's what I keep saying. adjustable. And you can see when you draw the scales, if you go down in the rows, there, 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 and, and just follow the rows along, rather than try and make it uh, start from the top, work your way down, or, or start left to right or whatever, if you work in the pattern that you've drawn with your cross hatching, as your arm gets tired, your bits get, your scales get smaller, and then you go, oh no, I'm getting too small. Then you go darker again. All of that um, helps your scales to look more real. Okay. Variety. Okay, now that looks like wrinkly old skin on a strange old lizard. Now, let's go back to these claws. Find my sharp bit, there we go. So the claws are attached to the fingers, or the, 
not so much the fingers, the, the uh, toes, although they are fingers, aren't they? And we go this way, contour. Now, are they fat or are they thin? They're thin. And looking at how the fingers join, you'll see that they have a lot of uh, space at the top here, where the shadows are there. So we can break up the line with that. And look at the claw. It's almost got a, a protective front one, first layer of scales. So you'll remember doing all of this when we did our graphite lizard and we're doing it again exactly the same way using colour because it's all the same. Techniques are all the same. You just have to repeat your graphite lines and instead of blending add colour. So as we go up here with the foreshortening of this hand here, oh this, sorry not hand, this finger here, you can see that it gets very very small here and very very dark because this is coming out this way a little. Shadow and now I can see a couple of distinctive line patterns here quite thin going down to there there's a couple of ridges here which we can put a few contours on see messy is best when you're doing this sort of thing same as here okay so now we're going this way along the fingers around this way so if you work a little bit at a time it's not so daunting to do all these millions of scales go round like a sausage oh, yeah, these ones are coming up this way a little and those ones head downwards reasonably flat bit there a little bit of perspective and a little bit of shadow as well so you can see that it's once you've got the hang of it it's not too scary and you can try on smaller things, you can, um, little lizards, uh, scales of butterflies, a 
shadow there. We will be putting the dark grey on some of those. And it's quite dark down here, so put that on first. And then mark in. Yeah, looking at these shapes, looks like Cocoa Pops are added. Okay. So I'm doing a wider line by not moving my pencil to make it sharper. Because the join is much softer here. And down this way, that's the tummy, so we'll come out this way. Just with those contour lines, can you see how it looks like it's coming in and out? Depending on how we put the colour on depends on how it looks in or out. Do the wiggles. And then coming back up here for a little bit of sharpness, turning into a wiggle. These are all artistic terms. Okay, darken down here or sharpen that there. go over the lines occasionally so it doesn't look too clean and tidy I still want it to look like a painting an accurate painting one that shows that you've been studying what you're painting as well, that you know what you're looking at. Now these are very thin here, remember we did the lines very close together and that's because that's going to have a quite a light bit there. When we add the white, right, what have we got up here? Oh, I remember those lines of light here. the top here that's quite light as well light as in light gray rather than white this bit here is softer can't really see the detail there but the top of the leg is still catching the light lighter scales underneath here but not too many. We'll use the light grey for those. One or two lighter scales there. A 
So if you see the scales from an angle, they are quite flat, elongated, like little flying saucers. If you see them from above, then you will see quite distinct circles. Okay. Ellipses and circles, that's what they are. Here we go. A few more light bits up here. So we'll add some more white to this because it needs to stand out a bit more. So when I'm angling the pencil straight uh, vertically to the paper, that means that I want to put a little bit of um, a little bit of extra pressure, and I want it exactly where I put it. If I angle, if I hold the pen pencil right back here, I can just come through and do very light little bits, but I can't put any pressure on it because it's, I'm holding it too far back. So that's one way, because I'm heavy handed, that I stop myself from putting too much pastel on here. All these little ways, little nip, tricks and, and tips help you to overcome your learned problems. <laughs> Although I have to say that most people are light-handed when they start, not heavy-handed. Okay, still on the white. Here we go. Here, 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 here. Coming up the top there. Coming up the top there. I want a few bits here. So, let's get the light grey. medium grey. Just soften up some of this. If you have a look at your reference you'll see, although you can see that it's scales, you can't really see the direction of those bits. Alright. Light grey. Use softly. coming through making these little little soft marks in each of those open squares sort of squares and if you don't take your pencil off the um, paper it also softens all those edges for you as well This will have to be lighter up here. Okay, so holding the pencil further down means that I can get more definite shapes. through the middle there because I think those are a little bit too big and one or two lines extra through there so they're different sizes back to this it's the same as your scribble stroke you put those lines on so that you have a guide so you can do random without having to think about it. We all know random's very hard to do. Okay, so it's nearly finished. Finished to an acceptable level anyway. There's always more you can do on everything. And when you know to stop is when what you're doing is not improving your picture in any way. And that's when 
you need someone to pat you on the shoulder and say, okay, I think you can stop now. Breaking up those lines a little as they disappear. Coming in with the white. So up here we've got white. Catching on the ridges of these little wrinkly bits. And then just very softly on here. this bit here not so much some white but a little bit lighter than what we've got it down here someone spilt their cocoa pops down here we're just going to put a few lighter bits as well we've got light under here reflected a bit of bounce tummies are always lighter so we can go a few lighter ones down here Remember, dark, light and medium. That's all you have to think about. Now, just going to put some white up here. Make sure that's a soft edge, that's a hard edge. And, oh, nearly forgot. This other foot. Did you notice that? So we've got two toes just showing. This one here. Bit of contouring. light. The claws have a pink bit in, pink touch to them as well. I'm putting a tiny little bit of white on there so that you can see it. So a little bit of the flesh colour in these. of some leaves use some brown in there as well some grey. A little warm up the ones at the front. And then our light grey. Have a look at where the light is actually hitting these leaves. as the picture can go lighter if we want to 
dark sepia in these shadows, make it, the leaves look lighter. This is the tweaking and I'll just rub these behind bits again. Oh, we've got uh, the ends of this as well. So I'm just going to darken a little bit behind there so that they stand out. rid of it all but I do want to soften some areas okay, add a tiny bit of orange up here just to brighten that eye a little Sepia over the top, blend it in. Okay, now final, finally, uh, I could do a bit lighter on here. So we just have a look and see what we can add. So this level here. detail that we've done now is an acceptable level. If you wanted to go further you could. Now we've done our light, now we're just going to tweak it with a bit of black. So we come through and we can add the tiniest bit of dark to the base of the nose. We can add the black in the pupil of the eye which is darker than the dark sepia around the edge of the eye it pops the eye back in now this doesn't really need to be too much added to this because he's a, a light grey one but we can put a few tiny darker patches in there let's soften the edge of that with a dark at the ear. Now if we blow our eyes this bit here is a little bit darker. So put a little bit of that on there and one or two accents just in the deep part there. Don't want the lines to be done because that will then make everything stand out the same. filled it all in because all I'm doing is adding a little bit of dark to what's there. Pat, pat, pat. Pat. Now what happens here? A little bit here. 
because it's at the front. Should have done those lines darker. Pat. That's darker on that side too. Okay, so that's as far as we're going with our lizard. I mean, you can see I can sit and fiddle with this for ages, but we're not going to. So put the pencil down. There we go. Okay, so I hope you're happy with that. <laughs>